Hi everyone, Raj here, back with another video. Uh, so we are back to a new week, another week of reInvent. Uh, but in this video, we are going to talk about something uh, which is used a lot actually in real world enterprises, but it is not very common in your practice projects or in your test projects. It could be a little complicated, but we are going to demystify all that. Uh, so that feature is called uh, API Gateway Custom Domain. Uh, so those of you who are new to the channel, uh, my name is Raj. I'm a senior specialist architect for serverless and container working at AWS. Uh, before that, uh, I was in Verizon as distinguished cloud architect. And originally, I was working in mainframe at JP Morgan Chess. I'm also a published Udemy and Pluralsight author, and I play video games in my spare time. Uh, so what we're going to cover today is we're going to talk about what is API Gateway Custom Domain and why we need it, what are the advantages. Uh, then we're going to look at the detailed design flow, like what steps are necessary to activate it and how does the whole flow looks like. I'm also going to show you a demo. And by the end of this video, you will learn instead of calling your API endpoint using this cryptic raw URL, how to use a custom domain to call the API endpoint. Uh, before we jump into the video though, one request, please subscribe. I'm trying to uh, get to 10,000 subscribers and at 10,000 subscribers, I plan to do a, a live stream and uh, help you guys and girls out. Like uh, I will take questions, like what kind of things you need to learn uh, to move your career to cloud, uh, should you focus on coding? If coding, which part of coding? Uh, should you focus on AIML or some other area? Where is the big money uh, positions? All that stuff. So please consider subscribing. Uh, all right, with that, now that's out of the way. Let's jump into the video. So if you create a API Gateway API, uh, API Gateway gives you a, a endpoint for your API, right? And it would look something like that. Uh, like a number and then execute API, the region and then Amazon AWS.com slash and then the stage and then uh, the name of the API resource. You as a an user can use that invoke URL to invoke your API. Uh, but in reality, in real world applications, APIs are invoked not only by a user, but mostly by other systems. Uh, so let's say another application or another system is running on EC2. Uh, so they take this invoke URL and let's say they coded it as a parameter uh, in their application. Now let's say uh, after a few days, you change the API, right? You revisioned it, you defined as a new resource, or maybe something got modified and you know you are like, okay, I'm going to publish another version of his API. I'll keep the old version, but I'll publish another version of the API, which is better. So here, these two things will change. The unique identifier for the API will change and the resource name will change. So the problem is now one system is handling the API. So even though they change the API, that's not enough. Now, all the systems, in reality, there will be multiple systems who will be calling this API. They all have to change their application to accommodate this new URL. And those of you who currently work in enterprises, you know that's kind of cumbersome. Number one, not only you have to change, you have to test it out. Also, maybe down the line, you replace the backend API gateway with, let's say, load balancer to containers, right? If the invoking application is just calling using the custom domain, they don't need to know. You can point this custom domain from API gateway to load balancer without impacting all the calling applications. So that's the problem with a regular API gateway URL. So what custom domain does is instead of invoking the API using the raw uh, invoke URL given by API Gateway, you invoke using a domain. Let's say https colon slash slash lambda dash api.com, right? That's all you know. That's all you or the, or the application running on the Amazon EC2 knows, deploys behind the scenes 
API gateway will point this custom domain uh, to the actual API endpoint, right? And even if down the line, new API gets released, new resource get released, this Amazon API gateway can just point this domain to the newest invoke URL. So the invoking systems is unchanged. You don't need to change, it's much more convenient. Also, it gives a nice URL for you to call rather than this long cryptic URLs. So those are the advantages. Uh, so now there are a couple things that you, you need to keep in mind while using this API Gateway custom domain. I mean, that's why uh, you don't do this in your uh, pet projects, right? One is you store the certificates in SEM or Amazon Certificate Manager. It can be quite expensive. So after free tier, which expire in after a month, it's $400 per certificate. And there are a lot of steps involved, right? So which I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna go through the whole flow. Uh, so, but if you decide to follow uh, this video and do the demo with me, just make sure that you, you close everything and delete everything after the demo before one month passes, else you will be charged $400 uh, after the first month. All right, so now let's talk about the API Gateway custom domain flow talk about the API gateway. So you have the API gateway and then you have the API defined. So this is your API. And to have this, to do this, you need to have a domain, right? So you register your domain in Amazon Route 53. It works with any domain as well, but since we are doing everything in AWS, I'm assuming this is in Route 53. So let's say the name of the domain is HTTPS colon slash slash lambda dash API.com, okay? And Route 53 will give you a certificate for this domain as well. So the next step is you store this certificate in Amazon Certificate Manager, okay? After that, you have to tell your API gateway that, hey, use this certificate, right? So you point that from Amazon API gateway, but that's not it because root 53 does not know that, hey, if someone calls this HTTPS lambdaapi.com, send it to API Gateway because that it, there is no connection between root 53 and API Gateway. So for that, what you need to do is in root 53, you have to create a DNS record, an A record pointing to API Gateway domain. So this domain is not your API endpoint. So in every region, every account, the actual Amazon API Gateway service has a domain, right? So in this A record, you point that any traffic coming to this lambdaapi.com go to the domain of the Amazon API Gateway for this account, this region. So now the traffic will come to Amazon API Gateway domain, but remember that is not your API endpoint. So then in API Gateway, you have to configure that any traffic coming from this specific custom domain, send it to this API endpoint. So you can have multiple custom domains and in API Gateway, you can do this mapping because if you have multiple custom domain, multiple domains will send the traffic to same API gateway domain. And in API gateway, you could say, depending on what domain or what URL the traffic is coming from, send it to these API endpoints. And once all these mappings are established, then the application or the user can invoke just this custom domain and then the API will be invoked. Okay, so I know that was the flow was a little intense, uh, but let's do all of these steps in a demo and things will become clear. All right, guys and girls, let's jump into the demo. All right, so first thing first, to do this custom domain, we need to have a domain. So I'm actually gonna buy a domain <laughs> for this and I, I plan to use it for other demo as well. 
Uh, so I'm in root 53. I'm going to search for a domain. I'm going to uh, search for agent of change <laughs> matching with the name of the channel. Um, so dot com is not available. However, seems like dot net is available. All right, so I'm gonna add to cart, uh, fill up the credit card information, and then uh, complete this order. Okay, the order is complete. However, it takes a day or two for uh, Route 53 to give you the domain. Uh, so if I go to, uh, go to domains, uh, you will see that uh, this is uh, still in pending domain registration in process. All right, uh, one day has passed and our domain is now available. So next step, we are gonna provision the SEM certificate. To create the certificate, I am in AWS Certificate Manager. Click Get Started, then request a public certificate. And here we have to give the domain name so which is agentofchange.net. Just gonna copy it and then uh, paste it here. Click next. You have two options, either via DNS validation or email validation. Uh, this is to know that you are the owner of the domain. Uh, so with DNS validation, you will be asked to add a record. And with email, uh, you have to do a bunch of other stuff. So DNS validation is the preferred way to do this. Uh, so that's what is selected. Now I'm going to select next. I'm not going to give any tag, click review and click confirm and request. Okay, the validation status says pending validation. So here you'll be prompted to add root 53 records. Uh, that's how it knows that you own this domain. Uh, but AWS makes it easy. So if you're using AWS for all this, you will see this button, the create record in root 53, simply click that. It will add everything, click create. And that should be good to go. If I click continue, click refresh, and now the status is issued. All right, so now the certificate is stored in uh, SEM or certificate manager. Uh, so let's go to API Gateway and set up the custom domain. All right, I am in API Gateway console. So on the top left, you have these custom domain names. So click this custom domain names and then click create. And in the domain name, we have to give the name of the domain that we registered on root 53. All right, we use agentofchange.net. Uh, we are using TLS 1.2, which is the recommended uh, TLS version. Uh, scroll down, and here we have to point it to the SEM certificate. Uh, so AWS will give you the existing SEM certificates. So for our case, we are going to use the certificate for the agentofchange.net. All right, click create domain name. Okay, so after you create the domain name, you can see this is the API gateway domain name that we discussed. So this is not the API endpoint, but this is the API gateway service domain name for this account, this region. All right, so we established the connection between API gateway and certificate manager. So now let's create a DNS A record in root 53 to send the traffic to that API gateway domain. Okay, I am in root 53 console and here under hosted zones on the left, uh, you can see I have two hosted zones, but this cloudisking.net uh, is the old one, uh, which is already expired. So we're gonna click the agent of change.net and here it is gonna show us the records that's already existing for this. So for API gateway custom domain, we need a record of type A. So to create a record, we click this create record button. And then there are a lot of different routing policy. Uh, for this demo, we are just going to use simple routing. Click next. Then click define simple record. So under the value or route traffic to, this is where route 53 is asking 
where should it send the traffic to if it comes to this domain? So you'll have multiple options, uh, IP address or another value, LI has to another record, etc. cetera, uh, Elastic Beanstalk, Application Load Balancer, but as you can tell from the name, uh, we have to send it to Elias to API Gateway API. Okay, we select it, and then we are using the same region. Uh, so we are using US West 2. There we go. Choose endpoint. Now the endpoint should automatically come up. You don't have to copy paste or anything. So if I click this field, it should display the API Gateway endpoint. Okay, here we go. Click this. The record type is already A, pre-selected. Evaluate target health, we'll keep it as yes. Click define simple record. Okay, and then you have to select this and click create records. Okay, we are back to the record uh, screen. So you can see our A record is added. All right, so at this point, we have established the connection between our website and API Gateway domain. So the only thing that's left is connection from that API Gateway custom domain to your API endpoint. Okay, we are back to API Gateway. Uh, so before we do that, just wanted to show the API. Uh, so the API is this My First Lambda API. Uh, it's pointing to just a hello world Lambda. If I go to stages, the stage name is default, click get. Uh, this is the invoke URL. So if I right click and open link in new tab, it should say hello from Lambda. What we're gonna do, we're gonna point the custom domain uh, to this API so that applications can use the custom domain. So going back to API Gateway main screen, uh, select the custom domain, and then click API Mappings. Click Configure API Mappings, click Add New Mapping, and then you select the API that you want to use. So for us, it will be my first Lambda-API. Stage will be default. This path field is optional. You can put the path uh, for example, in this case, the path will be the resource. Uh, that will be like the absolute path, right? But if you keep this field open, uh, then and if you have multiple resources under this API, you can just give a slash and name of that resource and the same custom domain can be used to route traffic to uh, different API endpoints. So I'm gonna keep this open because that is a little bit more flexible. Uh, click save. All right, so all the connections are complete. Only thing left is for us to invoke the API via the domain. So let's jump into a new tab and do that. Okay, so to do that, remember to put HTTPS uh, because remember we are using SSL certificate and then we are going to put agentofchange.net slash the name of the resource, right? So the name of the resource is my first lambda. And then if I don't pass any body, then it will, it will go to uh, the get by default. Okay, so I'm going to type in my first lambda. All right, press enter. Here we go. You can see it's hitting the same API endpoint and giving us the result. All right, so now end-to-end -end flow is complete. This is how you set up a custom domain for your API gateway. I'll end this video with a food for thought. Uh, so we set the certificate in the API gateway for the custom domain. So the server is authenticating itself to the client. What if the client also needs to authenticate itself to the server? How will you achieve that? So that you will achieve using mutual TLS. So uh, we'll cover this in a separate video. All right, guys and girls, that's the video. Again, please uh, subscribe. Uh, let's go to that 10,000 magical 
subscribe button number so that we can have an amazing live stream. Uh, all right, have a great week, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.